So I'm driven by the fact and the knowledge and the hope and the dream that we can empower kids with the technology we have around us. We can help people build a better world. We can help them take part in changing what we see around us and continue with the power shift away from the very, very few to the very, very many. Technology in the hands of the right people with the right knowledge can change everything as we've seen time and time again. I'm going to talk about two elements of this Teach Kids Code movement, which we are. The one thing is what people can achieve together when they find a goal, set out to reach it, and help each other. Help each other make things possible without putting themselves first. The other part of it is how important it is with code, understanding the language of the machines for our kids. If you go way back, for the first kid crawling out of a cave, it was very important to understand the body language of the wild animals. Fast forward a bit, we got to the point in time where you needed to learn to read and write. And then at some point in time, it's, someone said it was a good idea to learn each other's languages, and we started learning foreign languages. So you wouldn't be foreign for each other. Today, it's all about the machines, all about the code, controlling and running our society and making it possible for us to do stuff nobody dared dream about before. For many of us, this whole thing started with this beautiful, beautiful machine. The machine of my dreams, the machine I regret so awfully throwing away somewhere. But luckily, smart people have made emulators so I can have it on my, any device I, I have at my, available to me. We can still keep on coding. And when I started with that, it looked like this. A simple, simple recipe for telling my machine to tell me its name, ask me what my name was, and then tell me, say hello, so it gave back to me. It was beautiful. It was empowering, and it was possible. It was possible. And that's probably the most important thing about it. At the same time, of course, if you're not really into it, this might seem abstract, difficult. You have to remember codes, you have to remember stuff, all that. And basically, we're about to enter a period of time where everybody was able to learn this and know this. But then something happened. Something I keep calling the curse of the graphical user interface. <laughs> the people were made distant from the code. You didn't need to know the code anymore. Because we, and we got what we had. Touch. We didn't have touch back then. Then touch was moving your fingers around on the keyboard. Today touch is swiping and touching glass. It's a beautiful thing, but it distances you from the code. And therefore, brilliant minds have developed coding languages like this. This is Scratch, made specifically for children and beginners of all ages, which is you guys, you can all start to learn to code because you've got boxes, shapes, colors, variables that you can enter into. And if you see here, you can, I'm pretty sure anyone in the room can see that if you press the right arrow, something moves 10 steps. And that's that. And basically, if you consider it, it's this. It's code in the form of Lego. You can build, rebuild, Break down, rebuild again, copy. You can, and you can all do this inside a safe environment. You can't ruin anything. It still works. It works. It works. And you can rebuild and rebuild and rebuild. And you can build beautiful stuff. Anyone who's heard about the One Laptop Per Child project might know, but most probably won't know, that the code for that is built with something resembling Scratch that I just showed you. And kids around the world are rebuilding it developing them further with that language. And it's all about those kids, those guys, those people of the future. Those people that someday will wake up and say in the words of John Perry Barlow, I am from cyberspace, the new home of mind. I'm all about the future. And if those kids are going to be all about the future, it also means they're going to carry us on their shoulders. They're going to pay for our old age, pen old age pension. They're going to make sure we have a beautiful life when we grow old. And they have to make sure they find a way to continue earning money, continue developing our society without knowing what's in front of them because things are moving really, really fast. And if we look at what does that mean, what, what does that demand of them, we can go into parliament. Someone in our, in our parliament at some point in time was very clever because they made a piece of law that says our schools are mandated by law to open doors and windows to the future. 
to make sure our kids in school are able to become creative, to create, and inventive. Make them want to invent. By law, it's illegal for our schools to not make our kids want to invent. And if you look at what that means today, that means they have to learn to code. They have to learn to code. And if they're going to build that future for us, that's what they have to do. And basically, it's about this. Taking new technology, new ideas, expanding, fixing, repairing, improving, and building society further. It's not throwing everything out. It's just making things better and moving forward. And that brings us to the 2nd of April, 2013, where a bunch of VIPs, which is very impatient people, <laughs> got together and said, we have to make sure that the school system won't let our kids fall behind. We got teachers, parents, older siblings, old age pensioners, whatever. We got them together and we started this movement which we call La Kids Are Coding in Norwegian, which is Teach Kids Code. The whole idea was we can do this. And we did it in a bunch of ways. But the important thing was we believed it was possible to do it. And one of the things we wanted to do, quite simply, help kids understand and master their own role in the digital society. And that's all about understanding how things have changed. Because my kids can't learn from my childhood how to handle being online 24-7. The closest I got to being online as a kid was when I was, after waiting a couple of minutes, and the black and white TV turned on. <laughs> that's quite different from living in an online society 24-7. And be creative and create with the technology versus just being a user. And as of today, we have surpassed 2,000 volunteers in Norway helping us out with this. Some of them help that one hour, some people help out every day. And what we found was that because we're a movement, it's working. Organizations organize, movements move. And that is what we're doing today. We're moving. And we've, we've sort of coined a term from this because a lot of people know the term innovation without permission. We've taken it one step further. We've started talking about franchise without permission, which really rocks and makes sure there's popping up code clubs all over Norway without us knowing about it. And they're doing stuff like this. They're bringing kids together into the rooms, sharing their knowledge. The kids are helping the kids. Kids are teaching stuff to adults. And they're basically learning how to solve problems. They're learning how to take risks in safe environments and believe in their ability to master the technology and help each other out. And what we're seeing is it's just working, 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 and there's no end to what they believe they can do and achieve. And we're seeing kids in school, the older kids working as teachers for the younger kids, and they want to learn from each other. We're seeing examples of kids teaching the adults the adult on the side here, he's a, he's a seasoned programmer, and the kid is teaching him a new programming language. It was a beautiful moment. And moments like this, when this kid has actually realized he's built his first computer, turned it on, and the computer said hi to him. <laughs> he's mastering the technology. And if we look to the schools, we're still there, in the same place. We had a beautiful experience in the school in Oslo, where we went in, we we're going to teach kids how to code in a language called Python. Teachers were skeptical. We said, we'll try. We're gonna, it's going to work out. It turned out the kids ditched their calculators and did math with a programming language instead, voluntarily. And as of 2013, more than 20,000 kids in Norway had attended code clubs in the evenings, instead of going to football, watching TV, or whatever, all based on voluntary work. The same year, 10,000 kids did the Hour of Code in Norwegian schools. We made the systems, the teachers just did it and said, here, one hour in school, you'll learn to code. Fast forward one year, 2014, more than 20,000 kids last December went through the hour of code in school in Norway. Easy, free, available, and one hell of a party for the kids that actually managed to do what they were set out to do. So where will we be two years after we started? The 2nd of April, 2015. For one thing, we want to increase what we're doing reach out and let more kids learn how to code, including their parents, because remember, easy for beginners, no matter what age. But also, we want to move on. We want to go into the refugee camps, the asylum seeker camps, centers in Norway, 
children's hospitals and really provide the ability to master, meet, and learn the technology for the people out there who have nowhere else to learn it. Because it's so simple and it's universal and you can build a future on it. You can master your role in a digital society. And what we keep saying to everyone is, okay, my, maybe it's a hassle. Maybe we never shut up. We have this one simple goal that we're striving for. We want to change the world. We want to put the power of technology into the hands of everyone. Think of it as the, uh, the age of enlightenment on speed. And if we get there, if we're able to do all this, we can actually make sure our kids can be confident about their ability to carry our society on their shoulders when we grow old, or older, I might say. And they can have a fabulous opportunity to communicate with the machines, build stuff with the machines, and break down the language barriers of all people on the planet, because code is code. So the question is, what are you guys going to do? <laughs> it's up to you.